Good morning, Grateful Gang. Lauren here, the Gratitude Addict. Happy Monday. It is Monday, July, uh, gosh, 18th, I believe. And I thought I would do a video showing you um, a typical day in my life. And, you know, I've been showing you bits and pieces of my life, how I gratefully live my chronic life. Um, but I thought I would try to show you as best as I can without filming all day long. Um, what a typical day is in my life. So I am sitting here. It is um, 6.40 a.m. I'm here with my cup of coffee. I am watching some gardening YouTube videos because I, I've mentioned before I'm on a news fast. We used to sit here and watch the news each morning, Rob and I, and I uh, just can't do it anymore. It's not for me. It's not a great way to start the day with gratitude, certainly. So I watch gardening videos and I need to sit here, gosh, at least at least for an hour and a half, sometimes two hours, because I'm sore in the morning. Um, living with, with lupus and fibromyalgia, I'm very sore in the morning. It takes me a while to get going. So I sit here with my morning cup of coffee. I go out in the garden, although today is raining, but that's okay. I have... Um, I have a pretty light day as far as things scheduled for the most part. I am meeting on Zoom with my friend Sharon uh, this morning just to catch up. Sharon Sarago Walters actually of Gratisize 365. She was on my show a couple of months back. She's going to be on the show again in two weeks. And uh, we've become friends. She's just such a, a light in my life. And we have a lot in common actually just as far as... Um, being really excited about gratitude and wanting to share it with people. So we really, really hit it off. And so we're going to meet just to catch up this morning on Zoom. And I need to go to the pharmacy and to pick up a prescription. I need to go to a friend's house, my friend with the farm. She is taking some of my, I've started some seeds um, for fall planting. And I've, I've got some seedlings that she wants, some cauliflower, purple cauliflower actually and carrots, and then I'm getting some potato seeds from her. So I'm going to her house, we're gonna do a drop off. And then I need to, it, I have a busy week coming up, um, which I'm trying not to be anxious about. I'm trying to just stay in the moment because then it, my monkey mind will get carried away with me and I will get paralyzed by, you know, thinking of everything I have to do. I'm going into the city tomorrow with my daughter, Riley. She got me tickets uh, to a Broadway show for us to go tomorrow night. We're going to see a limited run of Into the Woods, which is really exciting, starring Sarah Bareilles, who's one of my favorites, and uh, a bunch of other people, big names also. Um, so I'm going to be I'm spending the day in New York City with her tomorrow, and uh, we're going to see the show, and then go, I'm going to spend the night and then this weekend, we Riley and I are heading up to, well, we have my niece's show. She's in a, a musical. Um, and uh, then Saturday, we are heading up to Massachusetts for a friend's bridal shower. So we have a, a I have a very busy week. So today is me. I'm going to do my attitude of gratitude with chronic pain work, pre-schedule some posts, um, so that's my day. So I wanted to show it to you and just show you that, you know, things aren't always sunshine and, and rainbows that, you know, I hurt in the morning like I do now. So I just want to show you what, what my life is like. So follow along and, uh, thanks for watching. You can see it is, uh, it's pretty dark out there. It's been thundering, which is really just, I, I love summer thunderstorms um so yeah so i don't know if i'll get out to the garden today all right so uh, i am dressed a little bit i opted because i'm so sore this morning i opted to make it a self-care day today and i'm not showering which um you know in the old days i used to not shower at all for weeks at a time seriously um that is not me anymore i Regardless of how I feel, I make it an intention to try to shower most days. Maybe a day on the weekend, I, I practice self-care and I don't. Um, but these days I do. However, today is a day I don't have a lot going on. I Like I said earlier, I have to go to the pharmacy and um, stop at my friend's house. And I have a, a Zoom call with a friend of mine, Sharon. 
um, this morning. But other than that, not much. So I just put on some, some clothes, a t-shirt and jeans, which is like my, uh, my uniform. And I am brewing a cup of coffee here. And I am going to head outside because the rain has stopped. So I, I want to get a little bit of my garden therapy in this morning. So I have a little less than an hour, I think, until I meet with, with Sharon on StreamYard. So I'm going to I think the coffee's finishing up, so let's head out to the garden. I just want to get a little, here's my coffee, but I want to get a, I like oat milk in my coffee. Um, just to lighten it up a little bit, so let's get to the fridge here. Got my oat milk. Tough doing this with one hand, it'll get better. Oop, there we go. Just a little bit. All right, we are ready. We got Rory the Wonder Cat over here. There's Rory the Wonder Cat. She wants to be brushed. Rory's. Rory, she is my pride and joy. Rory is five years old. Say hi, Rory's. She's rolling around like that <laughs> because she wants to be brushed. Rory's. Rob brushes her every night before. But, oh, this rug is gross. We need to vacuum. Um, now, you creep. I love her to death. She brings me so much joy. You guys that have animals, dogs, cats, whatever animals you are, you will know that, um, especially, you know, when you live with chronic pain and illness, we search for things to bring joy to our lives. And animals are such a great part of self-care. They help us to forget about our pain for a while. And Rory just... She makes me laugh, right, Roars? Are you camera shy? All right, let's get our coffee and we'll head outside. It's still very cloudy out, but it is not raining. So if it is not raining, I am heading outside because as you guys know, that is my happy place. This time of year, um, wish the season was longer. We'll get our first frost mid-October here where I live in New Jersey. Um, and it's only mid-July. So still have a couple months where I get to head outside. Oh, here comes my hubby. Here's Rob, he's he's heading to work. <laughs> he, um, all during COVID, he worked from home, which made me so happy. And uh, even though he won't officially admit that he's back in the office, he, he has an engineering firm and he, the office is only 10 minutes from home, which is really, really nice. Um, he says he's not officially back in the office, but most days he is going into the office, which is kind of a bummer. So I, I kid with him that we're farmers and we're meant to be out here. Um, but uh, yeah, he's got to head into the office. So in a couple minutes, he'll come out to say goodbye to me, but Gonna grab my cup of coffee here and look at, I've got my fall starts here. So cauliflower, kale, broccoli rob, all these things that uh, will take the place of some of the summer veggies like cucumbers and tomatoes. I actually, um, I planted a lot of, I'm not sure if I talked about this in my garden video or not, but and tomato, oh, I, I did talk about them, the suckers. So I've, I've got a lot of plants here, tomato plants that are not full size and producing many tomatoes yet because they are the suckers. Let me show you. So these guys here, these guys here are smaller and not quite producing tomatoes because I these are suckers that I, I took off of the full size plants and planted. So when the other ones are starting to die down, these will be producing tomatoes. So let me just take a walk around here. And um, I did a garden tour with you guys, so you don't need another garden tour right now, but I just wanted to show you what is usually next in my morning. Walking around even a little bit helps me with the soreness. I'm very sore this morning, and I know it's because I overdid it a little bit this weekend. Uh, spent a lot of time gardening, and, and it's all wonderful stuff. Yesterday we were in the city with my daughter, Riley. She, um, she needed an air conditioner put in her window, and it's, it's because her apartment in the city is small. She is, um, can't get it herself. So she had Rob come in. We went in and had dinner with her. Here comes the hubby. We're going to say goodbye. So hang on a minute. All right. Didn't want to put our goodbye on camera because that's just between 
us, something sacred to us. And uh, I want to keep it that way. So anyway, we were in the city yesterday and I was gardening the, the uh, Saturday. So yeah, so that's why I'm sore this morning. But walking around helps a little bit. And hopefully by this afternoon um, or even soon, you know, this morning, it will uh, get better. So let me, I'm going to head around, do a little walk around, and then I'm going to head down to my office which is in my basement and that is where when you see me filming my live broadcast and this is what that's where i do all of my attitude with gratitude with chronic pain get attitude of gratitude i don't even know the name of my group <laughs> well it's only been eight years attitude of gratitude with chronic pain work i call it my heart work um and that's where I, i'm gonna meet with with sharon on Streamyard. all of my work is in my office in the basement so I will head down there soon and you guys can come with me. Okay, so that no rain did not last very long. I didn't even make it off the deck and it started sprinkling and I'm like, eh, I could deal with sprinkles. Um, and I just prepared to get wet, but then it really started coming down. So my garden tour was very short. So now I am down here where I do my, my work and my intentions. Those of you that have my book, um, 52 Week Intention Journal, which I was always displayed right behind me there. There it is. Um, a lot of the things I do each day you will find in my book. So I this is my area where I do all of my AOG heart work. So I've got my my computer there. I I got a um a pink iMac. I and Macintosh is something I had always wanted and um but didn't want I, I used to work on a a um what do you call it? A laptop, just an inexpensive laptop. And when I got my first book, the um, Five Minute Gratitude Journal for Teen Boys, I splurged and I bought myself a pink Macintosh. So I love my desktop. So I've got my Macintosh. And then right next to it here, I've got, this is um, an iPad, which I have a magic keyboard on. So it's really, it serves as a, um, like a second screen for me, which is helpful for my work. Um, when I'm doing live streaming, I can work on two places at once. And I film this on my phone, but over here is where um, my phone usually sits. And so when I get text messages and stuff, honestly, during the day, and I talk about this in the intention journal too, I keep my notifications off um, a lot of the day because what I was finding was that I was getting buzzed all day long with private messages on Facebook text messages, emails, you know, it gets really, really overwhelming. And I was feeling that. I was feeling that, you know, deep in, in my in my heart. And it felt like I was always on. Do you know what I mean? So I have set an intention to only, to put everything on mute, except for my kids and, and Rob. Um, everything is on mute. And I set certain times a day where I check those messages because I determined that first of all, I'm not that important where I need to be accessible to most people 24 seven, but it is also a, it, I consider it an act of self care to not be available all of that time. There's nothing that's that important, even in running the group, you know, my senior moderator, Linda, who's so wonderful. Um, she can get through to me if she needs to, but there's usually nothing that is that pressing where I need to be on call or whatever all the time. Um, and so, but most of the time I'm working in the group anyway, so I, I can see if something's going on, but with private messages, it's just, it's, I, I started doing it about a year ago and it is really life changing. So I would recommend that if you guys are feeling a bit overwhelmed, consider putting, you know, your messages, your texts, your private messages on mute. And I, I bet that you will find it makes a difference. So let me show you my other setup. So over here, I talk a lot about planning on paper and I've got a lot, I've got a couple planners. This is my paper planner and I, it's a Hobonichi Techo, which is from Japan. It is a page a day planner. Uh, I like it for many reasons, but I, I map out everything here. This is everything I need to do today so far. I am a big fountain pen collector and user. So this is a new pen. This is something I got um, with money for my last book. So that is my main planner. And then over here, I have a se secondary planner. Can I show this? Come on, let's go. Still getting used to the stabilizer thing. Over here. Show it. All right. That is my secondary planner in front of my keyboard. That is actually my wallet end planner. Um, 
So that comes with me. So for me, rather than, oop, here we go, rather than using uh, organizational apps, and there's many great ones, don't get me wrong. For me, I like planning on paper. I like, I, I believe it's an intentional and mindful act to write things down. It helps me to see it on paper. Um, and I have memory issues with my neurological issues due to, you know, that are caused by my illness. So my memory is not great at all. So writing it down, seeing it, it all helps to really spark my memory. And so, and you know, before I was so great at using paper planners, I would forget things all the time. Um, and especially with the work I do in the group here in this planner, my main planner, come on here in my main planner, um, over here, these, these colored dots are posts for the group. And each dot represents a certain post that we do each day in the group. It could be our daily gratitude, morning intentions, my good night post. Uh, this written in black is the word of the day in our creative writing group. So it helps me to see what still needs to be scheduled, what still needs to be posted. Hello, here we are. <laughs> um, so that is why paper planners for me are just so helpful. So I still have, what time is it? I saw a half an hour before I am meeting with Sharon and it's not a business meeting. It's just for us to catch up and say hi, because it's been a while. She's going to be back on my broadcast in two weeks. Sharon Saraga Walters of Gratis Eyes 365. Um, so yeah, we just thought we would catch up. We've both said that, you know, we're just going to be in our jammies unshowered with our cups of coffee and we're going to chat in a bit, but I wanted to show you my work area where I'm going to spend, you know, I'm going to meet with Sharon in half an hour and then, do a little bit of scheduling posts, and then I'm gonna head out to my my friends to um, pick up those seed potatoes. They're Yukon Gold, and I wanna plant some more potatoes, dropping off some cauliflower uh, and carrot seeds and seedlings for her. Then going to head to the pharmacy, and then I will come back here and do my work and, and you know, tackle these uh, written intentions that I have in my journal for the day. And I may make them all, the likelihood is I will not. Um, and that is okay because it was only an intention. And that that's something we do in the group every day. We have a daily intention post that's posted at 5 a.m. every single day. And it's what, you know, what do you intend to do today? And the reason why I like that is because I feel like it gives us a really good, um, I don't like the word goals for us because our, our conditions are ever changing. And so what we intend to do now could change in 15 minutes based on how we, we feel. And if we set, set goals and we're not able to do them, it's, it's a recipe for self resentment. I don't like that. So if we set daily intentions, I, I have talked about this in other videos that it's written in pencil. It's a loose roadmap for our day gives us things to strive for. I feel it's more important to do that or help more helpful, I should say, to do that than just going about the day loosey-goosey and seeing what happens. Um, to me, it's a little more helpful to do it this way. So, you know, is it semantics with the words intention versus goal? I don't know, but I know my group loves it. So that is posted each day and that's what I have written down here. These are my daily intentions for the, for now. And they're always changing and chances are I will carry some of those over through until tomorrow. And that is absolutely fine. Um, so I will see you soon. We'll see what happens next. One more thing, something else I do in the morning. I have this wonderful um, page a day calendar. It's put out by the people at Grateful, uh, a network for grateful living. And it's a, um, I forget the name of the calendar, but it's a pay, it's the page a day calendar that is put out by gratefulness.org, a network for grateful living. Um, so each day I look at the daily reading and this morning's is really great. It's, um, a quote by someone named Carlos Castaneda. And it says, we either make ourselves miserable or we make ourselves strong. The amount of work is the same. I, that is, you know, the, the crux of my, my work and people with, with gratitude, um, or finding gratitude when you live with chronic pain and illness, the energy is the same. In fact, it, it's it's um, it's not up to us to be grateful, but it is up to us to practice gratitude. We can't just snap our fingers and be grateful. It's not that easy. Um, so I wanted to read that to you. And one other thing I, I do each day, which I have written down in my, my planner, 
is I do, I post a, the daily reading. I, I say good morning to my moderators and my group, which is Sandy, Jill, Arlene, and, and Linda. And I um, share with them a daily reading from this wonderful book. It's called Thriving as an Empath by Judith Orloff. And it's, um, yeah, it, I take a picture of the day's reading and it's a great way for us to sort of say good morning to each other and set off the day. Let's see what today's reading is. Uh, I won't read you the whole reading, but today today's about nourishment. And it looks like it's talking about nourishment in food form, but also spiritual nourishment. So that should be a good one. All right, going to head off and uh, get a couple things done before I meet with Sharon. Hey, gang, I forgot to film before I left, but I just finished my meeting with Sharon. I shouldn't call it a meeting. My catch up with Sharon Saraga Walters. And uh, I am now heading to the pharmacy to pick up a prescription and to my friend's house to drop off some seedlings, some cauliflower seedlings that I started, some seeds, and then she's got some seed potatoes. So um, so that is what I am doing. And then I just got a note from my mom that she and my dad are going to stop by because they are picking up my niece and nephew for their grandparents week. She did, my mom, my parents do this with all of their grandkids every year and have since my kids were little. So they are picking up my niece and nephew and they're gonna stop by to drop off something to me. And then uh, the rest of the day, I'm going to be doing my AOG hard work, my attitude of gratitude with chronic pain work. So um, yeah, so I'm still hurting, a bit sore this morning, um, but not enough where I can't you know, handle going out. I mean, sometimes it, it definitely is a struggle when, you know, when we're hurting to get up and do these things, like go to the pharmacy or whatever. And, you know, honestly, if it was so, so bad, I wouldn't, honestly, you know, we, we need to practice self-care. Uh, but there, I also find there's a hard line, there's a balance between, you know, kind of giving myself a gentle nudge to do these things and also exercising self-care and, and allowing my body to rest. And I think that is something that we grapple with daily as to how far to push ourselves. Um, you know, no pain, no gain doesn't apply to people living with chronic pain. We can't push ourselves through our pain. I think with some people with acute pain, you, you know, pushing through it is a possibility. I don't think pushing through it is, a, is something that is healthy for people that live with long-term forever maybe chronic pain but I do think gentle nudges are important because if I listened to my body every day every day I was sore and said oh I'm gonna take it easy today I would never go out because I'm sore every day um, so yeah there is that I find there's I have a forever pro and con list in my head what I mean by that is my pro list is, you know, if I go out, I will get the things accomplished that I want to get accomplished, my daily intentions. And I will always, I, I almost always feel better after I can look back and say, oh, I made it to the pharmacy today, or I made it to my friend's house today. Those are big wins. And, and for a lot of people, perhaps that's small potatoes, um, pun totally intended there since I'm picking up seed potatoes right now but you know for people with chronic pain those are big personal victories to be able to push ourselves to do that um, so I, that's the pro that I will feel better and that I will have that sense of accomplishment for for you know embracing those intentions and accomplishing them cons would be how will I feel afterwards will pushing myself a little bit cause my pain to be worse sometimes it might Sometimes it might not make a heck of a lot of difference, honestly. So that's something that we have to weigh for ourselves and, and determine for ourselves whether pushing ourselves will be worth it. And that is a personal thing um, that you have to decide for yourself. Again, if I listened to my body and just always stayed home when it tells me to stay home, I would never get anything accomplished. So that, that is something we need to grapple with. But I do, so I do think gentle nudges are important as long as, you know, your mind and body are telling you that that's okay. So I'm almost at the pharmacy and um, 
you know, I'm going to need to park and all that. So I'm going to sign off for now, but that is what I'm up to and I will check in again later. Hey gang, I'm back from my errands. I went to the pharmacy, stopped at my friend's house. I actually stopped at a garden center to pick up some soil and I came home. My parents and my niece and nephew were just here briefly and now I am doing my AOG heart work, what I call my heart work. I am right now accepting my new members. As you can see from this list, I write down each morning, just about each morning, I write down um, in a journal the members that I accept. So I have a record of who came in when. I don't refer to it often, but it also, I, I like to do a personalized welcome post each morning when I let people in. So I tag the new members. And there are um, 70 something let me see, 73 people waiting to get in the group today. Um, this is what they look like. They all have to fill out. Um, there's three questions that people need to answer before um, they come in the group, or I am a little bit lax about that. They don't have to answer all of them. But we do ask things like, you know, do you live with a pain condition or do you support somebody with pain? Um, what are the other ones? making sure they've read our group description since we are different and we don't allow complaining in the group itself. And then I ask how they found out about us. Um, right now I am advertising, which is why there are so many. Plus I didn't do any over the weekend, so they kind of piled up. So I'm doing that now. I'm going to pre-schedule a couple posts and then I'm going to see that this sun has come out. I'm going to see if I can get out in the yard a little bit and get some dirt therapy on um, if I can, my body's still sore, so if I can, I'm going to do that. Um, but I love sitting here and doing my heart work each day and, you know, scheduling my posts and checking in with the group and, and seeing where everybody's at. I, I like to kind of take the pulse of where the members are at and, you know, I tweak accordingly with my team and see what is needed and, and what everybody responds well to. So, that is what I am doing. What time is it now? It is, oh, it's only one o'clock in the afternoon. So it seems like I've been going, you know, much longer than that. But yeah, it's one o'clock. So I'm going to finish this up, do some posts. I need to pre-schedule some posts because I'm going to be in the city with my daughter Riley all day tomorrow. So I like to have the post pre-scheduled so I don't have to worry about it. Um, I don't do that with all of the posts, but with most of them I do. It just freeze up. If I can do them all in one shot, it frees up the rest of my day so I don't have to continuously check in on the group. So that is where I am at here at one o'clock on this Monday, July 18th, and I will check in later. Hey there, gang. I really need to get better at this video vlogging thing because like I'm supposed to be showing you a day in a tip of my typical day in my life and like Five hours has gone by, so I'm not really showing you my day. And I just realized this, I'm cooking dinner here. I've got, I'm making um, some Japanese rice noodles with a spicy peanut sauce and some broiled broccoli rob. Let me show you. Yeah, you may or may not know this about me, but I am a foodie and I love to cook. Um, so I've got pot boiling here and I've got these wide, rice noodles, which I like. Um, I've never seen them in a store. You have to get them from Amazon. They're really thick. They're like this thick, kind of hard to see through the packaging. I already made this peanut sauce, which is like curry and some garlic and ginger and rice vinegar. It's one of my favorites. So I'm cooking dinner and I'm like, oh, I'm really not videotaping here, am I? So here's what I have been doing in the time I have not been videotaping. Um, I finished up a couple days worth of my AOG heart work posts because I leave in the morning to go spend the day and overnight with my daughter Riley in New York City tomorrow. So I wanted to get those all situated and scheduled so I don't have to worry about them for while I'm gone. I really like that feature. So they're all scheduled, ready to go. Um, then I needed some dirt therapy, so I went outside and I planted a couple bags of potatoes because I have to show you guys these seed potatoes that my friend gave me. Hang on. So, she's an organic farmer, and these are the seed potatoes. Now, mind you, this is six bags later. I've already planted six bags worth, and I still have these. Would you look at this? I've never seen anything like it. 
They're beautiful, they're Yukon Golds. And I've, I've only started planting potatoes this year and after harvesting a bag or two, honestly, homegrown potatoes are a revelation. Like you would think, how much, it's a potato, how much better could it be? And maybe some people think that about tomatoes, which they would be grossly incorrect because, you know, a store-bought tomato is a completely different animal than one of these babies. I just picked this today. This is a malachite box. It is supposed to be green and it is one of our favorites, this, and this is a Berkeley tie-dye, which is my other favorite. All right, focus, Lauren, focus. Don't get me started on tomatoes. So anyway, um, so yeah, you think how much better could a homegrown potato be? It's a potato. Oh my gosh, you guys, unbelievable. And I had heard this through some of the gardening groups I'm in, but it was unbelievable. So I thought I had been done, and I've been succession planting potatoes in grow bags all throughout the summer. And I'm right now at sort of the cutoff, like it's gotta be planted now or it'll never make potatoes in time for first frost. Um, and then my friend said, hey, I've got these leftover seed potatoes, the one with the farm, seed potatoes, do you want them? So that's what I picked up today earlier. And, you know, I can't, I can't not plant them. But I'm running out of space for them. I'm running out of grow bags. I, or, I'm feverishly ordering more grow bags. Anyway, I digress. I spent a couple hours planting um, potato. Actually, it wasn't a couple hours. It was maybe an hour and then it started raining again. It's really been raining on and off. As you can see, it's really, um, yeah, the sun comes out for a minute and then the rain comes. But honestly, we needed the rain so, so badly. We hadn't had rain in weeks, really weeks, three, four weeks. Um, here's an example. These are potatoes. Each one of these bags has potatoes. Um, and I'm kind of embarrassed to show you how many bags we have. <laughs> like I said the other day in my garden tour video, you trade one addiction for the other. Gratefully, I'm no longer addicted to booze, but I am addicted to other things such as planting potatoes. So that's what I've been doing. Oh, and then there's another thing. So I mentioned my parents were coming off or coming over to drop something off. They were here with my niece and nephew. And they did drop something off. Let me show you what it is. My birthday is coming up and my mom wanted to get me something, even though I always tell her I don't want anything. She's my mom, she wants to get me something. I understand, I'm a mom, I totally understand. So Amazon Prime Day was last week and of course she wanted to take advantage and you know, if I wanted something in particular, maybe she'd get a good deal on it. So I went back and forth, like do I want a raised garden bed, blah, 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 with all these, fruits and veggies that we are um, growing, I thought maybe one of those food saver things would be good. So that is what they dropped off. And I am putting this together. Um, you know, honestly, I needed another kitchen appliance, like a hole in the head, truth be told. I have, because I love to cook, I have them all. And they sit in boxes up here in the kitchen a little but in the basement. But I'm hoping, you know, that it will prolong the life of a lot of our fruits and vegetables, green beans, you know, everything that we're growing. Um, and you can do it, use other things to, other things for it. Also, um, marinating and sous vide, um, which is like cooking gently in water. So I'm looking forward to figuring it out. That's what I've been doing. So that is what I've been doing. And now my water is boiling. As you can see from my noodles, Rob's not home yet. Um, if it stops raining enough, what happens is when he comes home, we go out and we do like a nightly tour of the garden, um, which is really nice. It's, it's something special that we do together. He doesn't have to, time to do it with me in the morning because he's off to work, as you guys saw earlier. So I'm hoping that, um, you know, I'm gonna pre-prepare dinner and I thought I'd be a nice wife. And since I'll be gone tomorrow night, I thought I'd make a lot of extra so he'll have, you know, plenty to eat tomorrow night. Although honestly, I am the luckiest woman in the world. That man is so self-sufficient. He has never once asked me to make a meal. He, he can cook on his own and he does, which honestly makes it much more, that much more pleasurable to cook for him. So I am gonna go finish dinner and 
uh, I don't know if I'm going to come back tonight. Well, I, I should show you how I end my night. And it will be brief because by the time our garden tour is over and all of that, I am an early to bed girl, so I'm in bed by nine. But I'll show you the one final thing I do with my day to complete our day. Stay tuned. Hey gang, so as promised, I am showing you how I end my day. The same as pretty much every day. I am here with Rob and Rory the Wonder Cat, he's the love of my life there. The cat's the love of my life too, but really that man. So we are here, we're watching TV until I start falling asleep in a little while and then I will head to bed. So I hope you've enjoyed watching my chronic life. It's, it's uh, you know, not the most exciting life in the world, but to me, I am blessed to have it. And this is a, a pretty dip, pretty typical, you can tell I need to go to bed, <laughs> a pretty typical day for me. So thanks for watching. I will see you next time. Peace and love. Get your gratitude on.